considering almost losing two points on the NDX and uh, just about 1.4 points on the SPX, pretty impressive price action for GTII nonetheless. Let's go ahead and find out what the possibilities are for the following sessions. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by once again. This is Arca coming at you with a GTII technicals, raw price action, and statistical threat of analysis on this Thursday. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading community and Discord called Arca Bulls. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the charts. Okay, so we're looking at uh, GTII on the daily chart here, and we're going to reference volatility versus momentum first because this is incredibly important for us to... Uh, kind of watch as the days pass along, right? And the reason why I'm saying this is because there is a very important pivotal, pivotal, uh, pivotal point here, sorry, for momentum, and that's actually favoring the upside. Please remember that volatility is direction neutral, and we pair it with stochastic momentum to be able to gauge that direction bias. So in this case, we are actually, just like yesterday, starting to make that pivot towards the upside, and it looks like volatility is now trying to expand, okay? So this is actually a very, very good thing, not to mention another thing that I'm actually noticing right here. Let me just go ahead and take a trend line right over here and show you what I'm talking about. It looks like we're following a pretty nice... Uh, 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 could it be here, actually? No, no, no yeah, yeah, it's right about here. It, it, we're following a pretty nice regression here, and it also looks like we're following in the in the oscillator as well. Okay, so we're, it looks like we're finding that balance right now, and we could be making that very short trek into the critical volatility zone, which could be within the 90 percentile of the BBWP. So what that means is that whenever we do reach uh, the critical volatility alongside an upside pivot, particularly in the bullish control zone right up, right up here of the momentum, explosive moves can happen to the upside okay so this is this is actually a very good thing just like it did here right so we're looking at uh, i showed you yesterday just a few examples of what can happen when we start retracing from critical volatility or start contracting from critical volatility right so we get upside moves just like these right so this is a good this is a very good thing considering the position that we're starting to begin so please remember we're going to have to uh, practice a little patience here with GTII as it is preparing for that upside move and in that preparation alongside the stochastics uh, you know the setting of the conditions for the stochastic momentum and the uh, volatility you know, we're, there is going to probably be some choppy price action here, slightly bearish, slightly bullish, but nonetheless, it's still looking pretty good. Okay, you guys. So let's go ahead and now make sure to touch on the three day time frame because the three day time frame is suffering a little bit to the downside, but it is going to be essentially saved by this time frame here. So the daily would have to reach its high first before it actually influences the three day of which looks like this right now. Okay, so please take a look here that it is still in a down in a downside pivot, but remember the three day time frames do tend to live out pretty uh i mean they, they take a long time to live out is what i'm trying to say okay so this uh three day time frame is still above the opening of this previous candle three day iteration here which means that in 20 hours and 42 minutes when this candle is done it would essentially serve as a validator for a continuation to the upside we definitely don't want this to close below this candle low which could be at about one dollar and 41 cents Although if we do touch it as a support, it's still fine. Okay. I'm just, I'm not saying that we're going to 141. I'm just saying that if we do touch that 41, it's still okay. We just don't want to close below that. Okay. Because then we're going to have to look at other methods of being creative here in order for us to uh, get, continue gaining that upside, but still, it's still, everything is looking not bad. Okay. Referencing the time, the five day time frame, you can see that in five days and 21 hours, we're going to be closing our new, uh, our new candle iteration here of which started just, uh, about yesterday, I think. So we still have a we still have a an upside continuation on the stochastic momentum, and also we're starting that uh, contraction phase here from uh, volatility. So this is this is essentially the signal still fired and favoring the upside. Okay, so please please always keep in mind that as soon as we start getting these little pivots here and showing a little bit of weakness, it does it's not the end of the world. But we want to make sure to keep an eye on those things. Okay, because it's not always that. For example, like this, we started pivoting. And then it actually continued and then it started showing its weakness, right? So, but it, there are instances in like which this case here, which is a very similar pivot in almost the same length as, as this pivot here, right here. You can see that we actually just pivoted and then continued on to the upside. 
Okay, so we're, we're going to keep an eye on this uh, metric here so that we can gauge that edge over the uh, price action. Okay, so now let's go ahead and reference the broadening descending wedge that we've been writing for quite some time now. And I want to go ahead and just let you know that the price action today, of course, went down all the way to about $1.53. But look at this. It just ended up being another test of our, of our newly converted resistance into support of our broadening descending wedge. Okay, so this is still looking really nice that we're we're right <laughs> we're right we're right in this area here and usually when we come back to this uh, to this support area and start testing it, usually we tend to consolidate within this area, okay? So it's, it's like that even with uh, COSM, it's like that with a lot of things actually. So let's go ahead and now move on to the next chart. If you guys are curious to see our position on the fractal analysis, the time fractals, please go ahead and take a look at here. Very eerie comparison between this wave here and this one over here. Interesting, interesting price action. It almost looks very, I mean, I don't know. It, it looks similar, right? Um, but the, the price action isn't indicating that we would actually move all the way down here. In fact, the price action, it, I mean, if I'm basing this just on raw price action, I am kind of seeing this to be a little bit of a temporary pullback that which of which we're already in and or have, uh, have already done. Okay. So why I say this is because these, uh, I'm sorry, the, the volume, right? I'm saying this because the volume is starting to minimize on that sell pressure. So this is, a uh, just showing that the that the bears are losing a little bit of strength right there. So it's, it's looking good. All right. So now let's go ahead and just reference this price action here, as I'm sure a lot of you are curious as to how we're moving along this. OK, so uh, very interesting that we're still within that 163. Or we're actually at 162. Right. So very curious that we're still at that not 618 level. Uh, I do want to mention that we closed right at it. So there is a little bit of danger here to face that uh, downside potentially to 155, even 153 at our current lows. But then continue, I'm, I'm telling you, continually uh, trading within this range. OK, so please, let's go ahead and now look at the last part of the analysis, which is going to be the RSI. And it's going to be a very important uh, aspect here right now. Okay, you guys. So please, please, please notice that the immediate short term time frame looks a little bit limited on its downside as we do have that 14 day simple moving average right below us. Please notice that the buy the four hour, sorry, is suggesting that consolidation that we're talking about. Also, the eight hour, okay, slightly bearish and it's slightly bullish. Why both? Well, it's slightly bearish because of the because of the 14 day simple moving average being above us and pivot is slightly towards the downside, right? Now, why slight, uh, now the slightly bullish part is actually because we're very close. I mean, a, a little closer to the center of the bear weakness percentile overall, but we're still sort of correcting our pivot here, which would essentially put us in the gravitational zone of the bear weakness percentile, which would uh, essentially say that we still have a gravitational pull to the upside. OK, we're losing bear strength over here on the daily. And this is where we're showing that uh, it is a limited downside. Please go ahead and notice the position of your RSI signal. And it would essentially fall right into the gravitational zone of the bear weakness percentile, similar to this area here where it got rejected from the gravitational pull and it actually pulled us back in. And now it has been sideways trading. Right. So we could be facing that. But Please notice that the that the three day time frame is essentially where it's validating some sideways trading, slightly bearish, slightly bullish. And it is in respects to this right over here. The RSI signal is right now sitting in that gravitational zone of the bear weakness percentile. And we actually have that 14 day simple moving average right below us as well that can serve as that support and saving grace for the price action to continue on to the upside. Please notice here on the five day uh, on the five day time frame that both the the RSI signal and the 14 day simple moving average are starting to make this kind of motion here. OK, so this is showing that we have a gradual loss of bear strength and we have an increase of bulls coming in. So, again, this is going to take some time, guys. OK, so please go ahead and uh, practice some patience. The markets are suffering a little bit, so it's not going to make this as easy as possible. OK, although I do expect maybe, maybe, maybe a recovery of the broader markets tomorrow. But we will go ahead and find that out as we move along the days. OK, so please remember that not to fall for those WhatsApp comments uh, below for the help me and the oh, sorry, the helplines and the and the text me's and all that stuff. Guys, that's not me. Do not fall for the for those traps. They are just trying to it's just a bunch of crooks trying to take your money. OK, so do not fall for that by any means, by any means at all. 
Okay, so also know that I'm not a financial advisor. Take whatever I do show and iterate within these videos is just a form of entertainment as I cannot suggest for you to buy or sell any assets whatsoever. Okay, you guys, I need you to do your own due diligence and everything will be just fine. Uh, please refer to the links in the description below if you would like to follow me on Twitter and join and or join the Discord trading community called Arca Bulls. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to wish you well from here. A very good night and I will catch you at the bell. Manana. Adios.